welcome back to another video. My name is Krista and if you haven't already be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. I mainly do gameplay and story time videos on this channel and in this video I'm going to be doing a little tutorial on how to do a dig site in Animal Crossing and then I'm going to be doing a story time on speed dating at Comic Con. And this tutorial for the dig site, um, it's going to be broken up into a few different parts because I'm going to have the main excavation area, the one that I'm working on now. Then there's going to be two camping areas and then there's going to be two areas where it's going to be like a research or work area. So it isn't just like a simple plain hole in the ground. There's going to be more to it. And for the story time with my experiences doing speed dating at Comic Cons, oh my god, where do I begin? I'll start with like which convention the speed dating activity was going to be taking part at. Um, so this was going to be at Fan Expo in Toronto. And for those of you who don't know, uh, Fan Expo is like a giant con. Like um, you have like the sci-fi, kind of like E3, then you have like regular Comic Con mixed with, you have like the furries, you have the My Little Pony people, um, and then you have like literally every fandom you can think of in one convention center. So you can just imagine the type of people that were signing up for the speed dating thing. You had people from all walks of life signing up for this thing. So when my friend and I at the time were going through all the events and everything that you could take part in during um, like our trip to Fan Expo, um, I was like, hey, you know what? We don't really do any of like the events that they have going on. Let's sign up for something. Like, and the only thing that I could think of that we would be able to relate to that wasn't like a super expensive like panel or like a tutorial on how to make like cosplay, it was a speed dating thing. It was for free. Um, all you had to do was just give an email that you would prefer the people to contact you at if you match with someone the speed dating thing and it would be just like a fun little thing and I remember my friend at the time being a little uneasy about like oh god like what are we doing like this is going to be so dumb like we shouldn't do it and I thought to myself like are you afraid of doing speed dating at comic-con but you're not afraid to meet up with random strangers on the internet well outside of your home city that's an, that is another story for another time because I was roped into these things and I didn't even know that they were arranging these meetings with these random people online. They just told me randomly that, oh yeah, we're going to be meeting my internet friend. That's a whole other story for other time. I have a lot to say about that. But um, they finally agreed to it and, and in preparation for what they should expect at this speed dating at Comic-Con, they did a lot of research. Like, these are the people that I tend to hang out with. People that are willing to do an extensive amount of background research. They're going to watch documentaries. They're going to read up on things. So my friend at the time, <laughs> went out of her way to go and watch a whole bunch of documentaries. And then she picked up all the techniques that uh, people would be pulling in the speed dating thing. What questions to ask. What questions she would possibly be asked. And she, she was ready to go. Like She was prepared. For someone who was like, oh god, this is an awful idea. She put in, she put in quite a lot of effort to... Uh, and um, one of the big things that she said that people, especially men, will tend to do at the speed dating things. Is basically check off yes to every single woman and they would to like maximize their chances you know to see if they maximize their chances of getting a match and i want you guys to keep this in mind when we start going through the whole post speed dating scenario so we walk into the place there's like a little room in the convention center the lighting is very low set in the ambiance my friends uh we sign in and we sit at a table and it's like women on one side, men on the other, and then the men just circulate around the room. That's the whole, like, you know, mechanics around this speed dating thing. And I remember there was one guy, and I'm a pretty friendly person. Like, if someone starts having a conversation with me, I'll probably start having a conversation with you as well. And there was one guy who just started having a conversation with me. He was telling me about how he uh, was teaching English in Korea, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, oh, man, blah, blah, blah. Like, I watch all these people on YouTube talk about teaching all over the world, blah, blah, blah. Tell me more about your experience and all this. And it's funny because the ratio of men to women at the speed dating thing was well off. So off that um, they had to turn guys away. They had to turn guys away because there wasn't enough women to be matched up with them. 
And this guy in particular thought he could do like a little drop in at uh, the speed dating little room and see if he could slide in. And they're like, nah, dude, like there's no, there's no room for you. You're going to have to go. And literally, um, like the people that were running this thing said, hey, but I noticed you're talking to that girl over there. If you want, you can go ask her if you want to exchange emails. So this dude walks over. He's like, hey, um, you and I were going to have a good conversation or whatever. Like, can I have your email? I said no. I said no. Because, like, I'm a friendly person. And I, I was just having friendly conversation. This, I had no interest in this man. I don't even know how to begin to describe this man. Other than he had Velcro shoes on. I'll leave it at that. He would definitely not, not what I would see myself dating. And looking back on it, I think there were only maybe like four or five guys that I can distinctly remember having conversations with. I remember one guy who couldn't even make eye contact with me telling me how he was going to go to school to become um, a physician's assistant despite only having a degree in history, which I guess is possible. Like, you can apply to other programs, like, meds, like you can apply to med school with, like, an arts degree. And, like, especially, like, in Canada, all you have to do is just have good scores on an MCAT and good grades or whatever, and then, like, basic, like, background knowledge in the math, science, and health sciences, and you can get in. So, but the thing is, though, is that this guy couldn't really describe, like, his future aspirations becoming a, phys a physician's assistant and he just could not look at me and I was pretty interested in hearing about his endeavors because I have I, I have two public health degrees tell me more I mean I wasn't interested in him but I was interested in him talking about his career goals <laughs> um another guy I remember him being like 20 years older than me and I'm like oh no and he was telling me how he was a statistician. And I just, I sat there and I had flashbacks. Like I said, I have two public health degrees. I was having flashbacks of like every statistics, biostatistics, epidemiology course I'd ever taken. And I was like, no, sir, no. Plus you're like 20 years older than me. Then there was another guy. Oh God, guys. So <laughs> the last two guys I'm about to describe are the only two guys I think I was like, hey, you know what? Let's talk to these guys a little bit more. Um, this guy starts going on about video games and everything. And he starts going on about how much he loves Resident Evil. And he's asking me, like, oh, have you played? And I'm thinking about it. And I'm like, I want to say I have. Bro, I start going on describing this fucking game that I'm thinking is Resident Evil. The whole time I got it mixed up with Silent Hill. I've never played Resident Evil in my life, but I carried on the conversation thinking I have while I was describing Silent Hill, which is a game that I own and I play. And I felt like fucking dumbass. I'll admit it. I took the fucking L on this speed dating at Comic-Con describing the wrong video game. And I could tell the dude's face kind of like, this bitch has no idea what the fuck she's talking about. And I'm like, you know what? I'll hit yes on this dude just to... Just to redeem myself, just be like, dude, I fucked up. I'm so sorry. Let me, I got the video games mixed up. Wait. Bro, he did not say yes to me. And me, uh, remember flashback? Flashback to um, a few minutes ago when my friend was describing, yeah, Comic-Cons, these dudes will always check yes, almost always, um, just to maximize our chances. Apparently, this dude had fucking standards on which video games his girl plays because, like, bro, he definitely said no. <laughs> rejected at comic-con people lowest lowest point in my life but it was probably karma for turning that other guy with the velcro shoes and i think he had pink hair i remember him having a crazy colored hair and i'm pretty sure it was pink so pink haired velcro shoes guy that was that was karma for me but this final guy guys he like the low lighting first of all really f skewed like, your visibility on seeing the faces of these people. Like, oh my god, in the daylight, totally different fucking person. But, um, he starts talking to me, and he starts saying, oh, like, my dad owns McDonald's. And him and I had a pretty good conversation or whatever. And I was like, hey, you know what? Enjoy talking to this guy. We'll, click, we'll do a little check yes. And on the train back home, I'm telling my friend, because we got our speed dating results right away. As soon as, like, the thing ended, you parted ways, and you got your results back. So on the train, my friend and I were talking and I'm like, hey, um, 
I matched up with this guy who said his dad owns McDonald's. Like, I thought that was kind of, like, crazy and weird, but, yeah, I matched up with him. And she told me, like, yeah, he was telling me how his dad owned McDonald's, too. I thought it was really weird. And we thought it was just, like, a big joke or whatever. Like, he was just trying to, like, build, like, an interest. Like, you form an interest in, like, your dad owns McDonald's? What? So, long story short, this dude emails me back. And him and I were talking for a bit, and I'm like, add my Skype, because this is the time, this is the era of Skype. And he was like, oh, like, he created, he had this, like, weird fucking story about why he couldn't add me on Skype. It was super weird, super sketchy. But then he sent me a friend request on Facebook. And I'm like, hey, you know what? Let's look into this guy. Like, my friend and I were super curious, especially the fact that he dropped this fun fact that his dad owns McDonald's. So we start creeping this guy and we find out that his dad doesn't own like McDonald's, like the entire like company. He owns essentially every single establishment in this particular city. And we were like, what, bro, bro, we start digging deeper. This dude attended a school with stupid high tuition. Um, he, he was rolling in money, my friends. He was rolling in money. But, bro, I don't care how much money you have, but that whole thing about the Skype being that fishy about it? No, nah, dude, that was too sus. And then when you saw pictures of him in the daylight, also sus. Like, it was like pictures of him at a whole bunch of conventions, like, wrapping his arms, like, awkwardly, like, grossly. Like, you know what I'm talking about? Like, when dudes just, like, get really into it for, like, around the waist pictures with a girl, or they're, like, really putting their hands on her, and I was really creeped out. Like, you could tell the women were uncomfortable in their little cosplays. I was uncomfortable, secondhand uncomfortable, looking at them, being uncomfortable in their cosplays, and... I still have his friend request on Facebook to this day. I have not accepted it. Sometimes I look at it and I'm like, you know what? That's like a, it's like a memento. It's like a little uh, souvenir, if you will, of my speed dating experience at Comic-Con and how I could have potentially been Mrs. McDonald's by now, even though, you know, I feel like that relationship would never last it after doing that, you know, little additional research. Oof, definitely was not, was not. Yeah, I dodged a bullet on that one. But yeah, that's the end of the video. Hope you guys enjoyed it, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye!